Well, in a moderately cool house, we'll take advantage of that and do another uh, book thingy me jiggy. Uh, it's one I picked up at university. I still don't know how I got hold of a copy of this. I think I may have got it from Amazon second hand either, so there would have been a reason why I brought it. It was not for an essay or anything. Could it be that I found it in a bookshop? No, I can't have done. Somehow I stumbled on it, and it is called England Dare England by a chap called A.G. MacDonald. My copy comes from, I forget exactly what year, 77 apparently, and was uh, published in 1933, which makes it awfully fascinating in more than one way. Uh, MacDonald's uh, lead character, his only, well, his main character, Donald Cameron, is a First World War veteran who, in a trench with a Welshman, are discussing why do the English do this, that, and the other. And Dave is effectively sets him up with a job post-war, and it's in a newspaper of some such. And he's a uh, task by Mr. Davis, you know, why didn't he write a book about the English through, you know, foreigners' eyes, uh, effectively? And so he goes all over the place, he, go, he goes to the League of Nations for, uh, for something, and he talks to all sorts, he, he does a cricket match, and there's, I don't follow cricket myself, but it's meant to be one of the best representations, or the funniest, in literature. And uh, for me, I guess, why I found it, was that there's a bit where he goes to the town I'm currently living in, the fun town known as Ellsbury. And it's doubly fascinating because in 1933, Ellsbury was, as the bit more or less makes out, not much. Train station, a couple of pubs, a few houses, and that's not to say it was like barren, no one was living here. But you get the impression that back in the day, certainly, there was not much for Ellsbury compared to what there is now. And also, you also get the impression that Ellsbury back in the 30s was a much nicer place to live, where people actually had manners, where the children did not grow up to be chaffy little bastards and uh, all the rest of it that we have to endure some of us now so yeah. like I said I don't I, I know it sounds funny but I usually have for all the thousand books I seem to have at home idea why I've bought it even if I don't know exactly where I bought it or or indeed, you know, like, you know, in my to eat part of those books that I know I brought because I was having an interest in a certain field. England, there, England came from nowhere, and I must have bought it for a reason, because you know, I was at uni, any bit of money, even a couple of quid or something like this. And also, I almost lost it at uni, actually, uh, at our LTS branch, as we nicknamed Little Titchfield Street for obvious reasons, um... You walked in, you know, obviously the main entrance, and you had to go all the way around the top floor one way to get to the library desk where you returned or got books out. And indeed, yeah, and you weren't allowed to double back, I don't think, because you could only come out one way. So anyway, I'd gone all the way around and dumped a load of books back with the library and got to Starbucks on the corner of Mortimer Street and Upper Regent Street and uh, realised I handed the bloody thing in, so I uh, couldn't get back into the building. So I emailed and I said, look, I've handed in a well off an old second-hand book. It's my home, t uh, you know, it's mine, could you return it? <laughs> and I've read it a few times, and as I say, the old speed depiction, which I'm, now that I've said that, I can't find it. Um, it's interesting. It's a nice little book. It's a snapshot of a country that will never be again. It once was, it has views and the like that obviously are a bit dated now, there's stuff about the empire, but not in the races, and it's just like, we, you know, my god, we have an empire, we should be better than this. And there we are. Two days later, he was at Marlebone Station, quietest and most dignified of stations, where the porters go on tiptoe, where the barrows are rubble-tired and the trains sidle mysteriously in and out, with only the faintest of toots upon their whistles, so as not to disturb the sig signalman. And there he brought a ticket to Ellsbury from a, from a man who whispered that the cost was nine and six, and that train would probably start from number five platform as soon as the engine driver had come back from the pictures and the guard had been to see his old mother in Baker Street. 
Now, Marla Rain Station has changed massively since then. They got away with a couple of platforms, so there was only four, and uh, they wiped out the Goods Yard in the mid 90s, where they made a film back in the day, a film or two. Um, if you want to see, if you're ever curious about how much a place changes, watch the opening to the Icarus file and indeed the uh, Beatles film is either Help or A Hard Day's Night because they run in and out of um, Marylebone Station. And like most train stations up until fairly recently, like 20, 30 years ago, you could drive right down the middle because you could take a taxi and get off on the platform and now it's massively changed. And it mentions uh, what I've been doing all my life, the likes of Great Missenden, Wendover, High Rickham, Princess Whisper. But it mentions stations that are no longer in existence, Cranton Road, Aikman Street, Blackthorn. There are no mountains or ravines or noisy tunnels or dizzy fire ducts. The Great Central is like that old stream of Asia Minor. It meanders and meanders into our last. It reaches loveliest of English names, the Vale of Hellsbury. It's a, yeah, and then he joins in a pub. And... Yeah. If you want to go back in time, it's not a bad little book. I love it in a way. And I wish I could have met A.G. McDonald somehow, uh, although unfortunately for me, he was a chap of a much different life. He was 45 when he died in 1941, and uh, Scottish to the end. This, curiously, uh, he was born in India, Pune, to his Scottish parents, and he died in London. Um, so, But he was a fierce Scotsman, from the sounds of it, uh, not a bad thing. And uh, he's, only, he's, not, he's forgotten nowadays so now you know thank you very much gentlemen and ladies